Almond yogurt is so expensive when you buy it at the store. I'm going to show you how to make it at home for pennies. Hi, I'm Glory B and this is Glory B TV. Viewers have asked me for more recipe videos showing how to make food that has helped me to stay super healthy and even younger looking than my 64 years. Yes, that's right. I'm 64 now and later this year, I'll qualify for Medicare, just saying. Now I changed my diet when I was 38 years old and I never looked back. Since then, I've become acquainted with many people who change their diets to what I eat at later ages and then reap the benefits of good health well into their 60s, 70s, and 80s. I've also known people who've tried to do what I did and failed because they became discouraged and quit. When I started out, I only had a book by Mary Lou Henner, an actress, who successfully changed her health for the long term. But many people I knew couldn't follow her book. It was just too difficult. So I developed a series of courses that starts with the Kickstart Your Health course to help you make positive changes to your health one step at a time, remaining encouraged during the entire process. When you eat delicious food, start dropping weight to get to your ideal weight, start to feel better, and even work with your doctor to lower and get off your drugs. It's so encouraging. I'll leave a link to the Kickstart Your Health course in the description box below the video and in the first comment. Now onto the almond yogurt. I've already tried to make it with store-bought almond milk. It doesn't work. And when I say it doesn't work, I mean the so-called yogurt comes out not properly fermented and looking unappetizing. I had to throw it out. There are too many other ingredients in the store-bought almond milk for it to work properly in a yogurt. So I'm going to make almond milk first by using raw almonds. That means the almonds aren't roasted and aren't salted. You can often find raw almonds in the baking aisles of large grocery stores at Trader Joe's or even at nut companies online. And you'll only need one cup of raw almonds. You'll put them in a bowl and fill the bowl with water and then let the almonds soak in the water overnight. You can keep that in the refrigerator overnight or on the counter, on your kitchen counter to soak. Let's get to the next step. Here is that one cup of raw almonds going into a bowl. I'm covering it with enough filtered water so that all almonds are covered. I'll let that sit overnight. The next day, I drained and rinsed the almonds. Then I do the work of getting the skin off each almond. Once you get the hang of it, the skins come off quickly. Even if you purchase fully blanched almonds, you still need to soak them overnight so that they blend well in the blender. Put the almonds in the blender, two cups of the water, and one tablespoon of maple syrup, which will help the milk to become yogurt later. Then put the lid on, and blend it on high speed for three minutes. Now I'm ready to strain the almond milk. I have a nut milk bag and I'll link to those in the description box. These are great because they have a string closure to keep everything inside of the bag. I like to use my largest bowl for this straining process because it can get messy and the milk can squirt sideways. A larger bowl can catch all of that. I'll speed up some of the straining so that you don't have to watch all of it. When I'm done getting all of the liquid out of the almond pulp, I'm left with the pulp inside the bag. But don't throw it out. I have a recipe for you for brownie bites that are made from the almond pulp. So I'm going to turn the nut milk bag inside out over a container to get all of the pulp out of it. Then I'll store the pulp in the refrigerator. Now that I have the strained almond milk, I'll pour that into a two quart saucepan. Next, I'm going to add two more ingredients to the pan, tapioca starch and agar agar powder. This will help the almond milk become a more creamy yogurt texture rather than being too liquid. I'll add half a teaspoon of agar agar powder and three tablespoons of tapioca starch and then whisk it together. Last, I add the remaining one cup of water to the pan and whisk it a bit. 
Set the saucepan on the stove over medium to medium high heat. Stir it frequently so that it doesn't scald the bottom of the pan. You want to bring the milk to a low boil. You'll see it start to thicken as it heats. Don't turn your back on it for long. Once it starts to boil, adjust the heat to keep it at a low boil and simmer. Set a timer for 10 minutes and stir it frequently, keeping an eye on it so that it continues to boil without boiling over and to make sure the heat isn't too low and it stops simmering. Now it's time to let it cool. You'll need a candy thermometer for this. It needs to cool to between 110 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is between 43 and 46 degrees Celsius. Any hotter or cooler and the probiotic reacting correctly won't work. I found it takes a long time, like 30 to 45 minutes for the milk to cool to this temperature. While the milk is cooling, I turn on the oven to the lowest temperature it will go, which is 170 degrees Fahrenheit or 76 degrees Celsius for my oven. When the oven reaches 170 degrees, I turn it off. The probiotic I'm using is the 25 billion CFU, like this one from Now Foods. You'll need four capsules of the 25 billion CFU probiotic. While the almond milk was cooling, I opened the four capsules of the probiotic in the little glass bowl. When the temperature reaches 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, it's ready for the probiotic. Just pour it in and whisk it together. Since pouring the milk from the pan to the glass jar might create a mess, first I pour it into a four cup pitcher, then it's easier to pour it into the mason jar. The description box has instructions for how to sterilize the jar, which you would do ahead of time. Then attach the lid to the jar. Now the milk is ready to go into the oven. Remember, I made the oven warm earlier and turned it off. I put the jar on a baking sheet, turn the light on, and put it all the way back by the light. I like to do this entire process at night. I leave the almond milk in the oven with the light on overnight for a good 8 to 12 hours. And then the next morning, it's ready to come out of the oven. Now we're ready for a taste test. So here it is. I've refrigerated it for, I don't know, two or three hours already. And it's coming out nice and thick and creamy looking. Because I removed the skin from the almonds after soaking, it's got this beautiful white color. Okay, and here's my, I'm gonna use maple syrup as a sweetener. I really don't like it plain. A lot of people like it plain. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh. It's so creamy. That is just, <laughs> and it only cost me, I made up, well, it doesn't come out to exactly four cups, but it's close. By the time, you know, all is said and done, it's about three cups. So go to the store and see how much a small little cup, maybe a six ounce cup of almond yogurt costs. All this cost me was what? one cup of raw almonds, three tablespoons of the tapioca starch, a half a teaspoon of the agar agar, and four probiotics. But next time I make this, I might use a quarter cup, I'll save a quarter cup of this and use that as a starter instead of the probiotics. If you make this almond yogurt and it turns out too liquid but still tastes good please know that's happened to me too i found three ways to use it even in its liquidy form first i used some of it to make a salad dressing i added things like onion powder garlic powder and a few vegetables in the blender second i used some of that liquidy almond yogurt in a smoothie instead of using water or nut milk in the blender i use the liquid almond yogurt my favorite was the almond yogurt, a few strawberries, and a frozen banana. Really delicious. Third, I use some of that 
instead of nut milk in my overnight oats. I'll link the recipe for overnight oats in the description box and the first comment. I think using the tapioca starch and the agar agar powder makes a difference in the almond yogurt to thicken it into a traditional yogurt thickness. If you'd like to know how to make the brownie bites from the leftover almond pulp or how to make soy yogurt, tap its image on the right side of the screen and I'll see you in the next video.